This time on Know for Perspectives, we're going to be talking about We Won All America City, and we're going to talk all about that. Nauticus introduces a spy ship. I'm not sure if it's really there. Fire and Rescue are going to give us tips about keeping this a safe summer. And this month is National Park and Recreation Month. Stay tuned for some great stuff right here on Norfolk Perspectives. Welcome to Norfolk Perspectives. I'm Bob Batcher. Well, we are, you are, an all-American city thanks to the fine work and dedication that you've had as a resident in doing what's right for our city and really improving the quality of life in your neighborhood. But you are at the mercy of these people on the sofa to bring the award home. And guess what? They did it just for you. John Andrews, it's your doing. I was going to say fault, but it wasn't. Yeah. <laughs> but John, for a while, now you were brought onto the city. You, you had a very good career with the Navy contrary to what others may say, right? Yes, sir. And you joined the city, and you're saying, what in the world am I doing here, right? I did. Yeah, but your function was to look at veteran affairs and really bringing veterans into the city. It's the neighbor of the mayor and the manager both said, make Norfolk the most veteran-friendly city in the country. Okay, then i got to ask you, why were you trolling the Internet and found this application for All-America City? I actually wasn't trolling. I was told by people in the manager's office. <laughs> they found out about the application, and as the theme was veteran initiatives to serve veterans and military families, they said, hey, could you take the lead in trying to put this application together? And I did. And? We got selected as a finalist. I know it. And we went out, and we won. Now, it wasn't really a, a simple journey, was it? No. No, it was... Uh, it was uh, a real work, uh, or it, it was a real effort, but it was very, uh, it was very rewarding to me because I saw the citizens come together, I saw the staff come together, and just like in the military, you said, okay, here's our objective. People came together, said, okay, here, I'll do this, I'll do this, I'll do this. Came together as a team, and we came together impressively. Thanks again to these, uh, the folks sitting on either side of me. One of the themes that I heard uh, through the presentation, which we've been airing at, and it's on YouTube, is that uh, we're a blessed city. We've got tremendous uh, um, water facilities. We've got tremendous historic neighborhoods. We've got uh, the largest naval base. But it's caused challenges. But by looking at solutions, it's all changed, right? Mm -hmm. So you, met, you put together a team. We had 10 people go out there. And those 10 were less, from this city was you. Lord Crutch. Brian Pennington, and the manager, Marcus Jones. Okay. And then the richness. <laughs> the Jack. richness. How do you like that? <laughs> oh, that's nice. Thank you. Jack Cavanaugh, president of the Freemason Street Area Association. And I was tapped to talk about floodwater mitigation, what we're doing, the city is doing, to uh, attack this big, big challenge that, that's facing us in the coming years. Okay. Betty Potts. I am the vice president of the Campus Ella Heights Civic League, and the chair of the Neighbors Build and Neighbors uh, Project. And it was an interesting and fun uh, venture for me. Um, I just remember coming into our first meeting and, you know, sitting across the table and, uh, okay, where do we go <laughs> from here? <laughs> what are we doing and, you know, what do you want me to do? But it was exciting because um, I saw that the Neighbors Build and Neighbors part was something that was uh, dear to heart, close to heart to me because I tapped into the vision that, that our city manager had to our neighborhoods and, uh, you know, tapping into the strengths of our neighborhoods and community and, and building on that. And uh, Campus Ella Heights is, in the south side as a whole, it's a rich uh, historical and uh, with a lot of strengths and we are tapping into that and we're mm -hmm. growing and just building the community it, every day. And Betty, you were one of the few that were actually quoted in the application. Uh, to, to get us as a, as a semifinalist about that kind of richness in the, in the South Side and the commitment to bring the community together. So thank you. And we're going to be seeing a lot more of you when the Aquatic Center opens yes. and all kinds yeah. of stuff going on. Yeah. yeah. We'll tease with that. Yeah. Okay. Nikki. Yes. I'm Nikki Southall. And you were there for? Neighbors Building Neighborhoods. Okay. I got to ask you a question. Yeah. 
Did you give the trash can back? I gave, I, <laughs> Come on. I, I gave the trash can back. You want to explain that too? Well, that was part of a prop that we used for our presentation. Um, my part in the, um, and I'm from Ingleside. I was the uh, former vice president, and I'm on the, also on the board. And I'm also a steering committee member with these ladies and Mr. Cavanaugh being in the Neighbors Building Neighborhoods project. So um, that was my role. So um, I chose to talk about what a civic league in a neighborhood can do in order to kind of boost up the Neighbors Building Neighborhoods effort. So I talked about the trash cleanup, the Keep Norfolk Beautiful campaign, and basically how our uh, city really does embrace city, civic leagues. Mm -hmm. and, and they embrace us and they support us because they know that the Civic Leagues are the backbones of the city and that's what the citizens are made of. So right. Right. when the city supports the Civic Leagues and the Civic Leagues can embrace the challenges and also the strengths of the neighborhoods and then it can just work together. So, But I did give the trash can back. Good. And, the reason, <laughs> and again, I think it, the, the normal paradigm that we've had is that uh, communities would say we have a problem city solve it, right, right. and the city may not Understand. solve it to right. understand it. So you would ask for bike lanes, right? We would ask for bike lanes and they would give us a trash and, can. And Marcus <laughs> gave you a trash can. And lo and you hold, you put the trash can to work too. Karen Tanner. Yeah. Now we know you're from the other channel. You're doing the news from <laughs> schools. Shameless plug. Oh, I know, and I had to say that. But, but you were there uh, for what? Schools or for neighborhoods or no, for all of it? My third hat. You got uh, it. Central Brown's and Civic League president and I co-presented with Jack on flooding. Um, we all know, possibly remember the Nor'easter, October 1st, 2010, where the headlines read, Great Day for Ducks, Not So Much for Trucks. Um, I got caught in the floodwaters and lost a truck. And we were stuck for like 24 hours in our neighborhood. So I think sharing that with that committee mm -hmm. was pretty powerful to let them know that from that aftermath that the city had a flood task force and allowed me, Jack, and a lot of other civic leaders and residents to come and be a part of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Karen, you made a comment to me over the weekend when I came by your, your picnic. Yeah, from Neighbors didn't Building eat, Neighbors. But I, got, I got to go to the picnic. I didn't get anything to eat. But anyway, <laughs> that, we'll talk about that one later. Um, you did give me some water on the way. I, I gave you water. But That's you made a comment about uh, content versus fluff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I also <laughs> spoke with, you know, at the presentation about Neighbors Building Neighborhoods because I, I say really the city of Norfolk empowers their citizens. It's almost like a neighborhood university. You can get grants, and so uh -huh. I received a grant. So I thought it was pretty powerful that what they do for us. But yeah, I, I just I just moved to Norfolk eight years ago, and I feel like I've just gotten really engrossed with the city. Mm -hmm. I live here, I work here, and we play here. Mm -hmm. so. Well, I want to thank you guys. Um, I'm getting the wrap up on this, but I want to thank you for representing the city, but also thank the viewer because you represented what all the hard work that's being put in day in and day out by our residents before you we went out to Denver, and now it's time to celebrate and party. Yeah. So I'm going to encourage people to go to our website, Norfolk.gov, to find out different ways that we're going to be celebrating in all America City. It's going to begin on 4th of July with you guys representing your work in Denver, giving it to the council, and the council giving it back. But then on July 13th, the Tides are going to celebrate uh, us becoming an All-America City by offering a discount ticket for all Norfolk residents uh, to come to the game and, and celebrate. There's going to be some prizes and maybe even have a stay vacation brought to us by our visit Norfolk. And then throughout the year, we're going to be uh, doing celebrations. So thanks for the work that you all did in representing the work that the residents do. And now it's time to give it back to them. So, thank you. Get to work. <laughs> Got it. Thanks a lot. When we come back, we're going to be talking about is it or isn't it the Wisconsin next to Nauticus? Stay tuned. The first day stepping on the court, I couldn't keep up. That motivated me to step up my game. When I reach a goal, I set a new one the next day. And my next goal is to go to college. Mastering the court takes persistence. So does getting into college. I've got what it takes. So do you. Welcome back to Nova Perspectives. We have breaking news. Uh, Stephen Kirkland is on the sofa. How's it going? <laughs> it's great. This How are you? the director of Nauticus. Happy summer. It has been a great summer. It has. And now I've been hearing, though, the last time you were on, you were talking about uh, paranormal Ghosts. behavior. On the, yeah. And I went and searched for them, and Steve, I didn't find any. <laughs> so now you're telling me 
that there's spy action taking place there on the ship? There are spies on board the USS Wisconsin. Well, I've seen those. They're popping up all over the place. Yeah. It, this is uh, uh, along the lines of our, our, our ghost uh, thing in October. This was truly designed to get families to engage and enjoy the ship. And we're so excited. They're loving it. They're really loving it. It's, it really, I know I had the pleasure of, and we produced that piece of, because it's, you're going deeper into the ship now. Absolutely. So we Absolutely. produced that, you know, Hank, the director, got lost, and so we just filmed his ventures. <laughs> you right. ended up in jail and the whole nine yards. So right. all that stuff is now open now, barbershop and engine room. and All of that's open, not the engine room, but um, barbershop, well, they look um, like engine, chapel, and, and with the spy piece, um, guests will be able to go down and see some of those spaces that are open to the general public. So but not just on YouTube, they can actually do it. They can actually do it, but okay. they can go to specific spaces that no one else can see, and it's cool. It's just cool. It's going to knock your socks off. Well, come on. What do you mean by cool? Well, uh, for instance, we have, are you ready for this? Yeah. The only laser maze on board a historic battleship in the world. So you'll be able to kind of do the Tom Cruise thing, the Mission Impossible through the lasers. Um, there's a, a decoding activity where you're going to have to deactivate an explosive device. You're going to learn Morse code. There's an infrared challenge where you have to stick your hand in and not hit the buzzer um, to save the world. Um, those are the kinds of activities that you can enjoy on Spice Ship. And really, families are, are um, doing it together, which is the, which is was really the goal. Um, is to have the family unit do it together, which okay. is so much fun. Uh, uh, Steve, I hate to break the news to you. <laughs> I mean, you're a really nice guy. You, you've done cruises and all that kind of stuff. You're a family <laughs> guy now. You're changing diapers. What the heck do you know about spying? I knew. Now, your daughter's not big enough yet, so I, you eventually you'll learn. But, I mean, come on, what makes you an expert on spies? I knew absolutely nothing. Okay. I, I, um, I love spies. From what I understand, love you were too movies. cheap to go to the James Bond movies. I, <laughs> I mean, come on. <laughs> I, well, I wait till they come out on there HBO. Go, yeah. yeah. No, but, I, you know, I, I, um, I knew that spies would be a great way to, um, dare I say, trick people into learning. I wanted the families to come on board the ship, have a great experience, but they're going to learn starboard and aft and port and forward and know what a bullnose is and know where the wardroom is. Um, but really, for the for the spy portion of this, um, I contacted a guy out of the blue um, over in England, and I said, Dave, my name is Stephen. I don't know anything about spies, but we have a fantastic battleship in Norfolk, Virginia. Why don't you come on over and see what you can do? And this guy was a former SAS. You know, he's a real. He's, he's kind of a stud. He's much, much, much better here on the sofa than me. Um, but he came over. He parachuted in. No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> but, but he came over and looked at it and said, "This." Is extraordinary, and so we sort hey, of took his expertise. Was, this is extraordinary. This is extraordinary. <laughs> this is extraordinary, <laughs> mate. I don't know. Shrimp on the barbie, you know, the wrong country. But um, we um, we got together, and he went back to England, and um, we designed these pieces specifically for the battleship Wisconsin. Oh, cool. So they, I mean, they're really obviously teasing you, but they are kind of based then on some. Oh, totally, totally. The, the 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 pieces themselves are designed to fit in the battleship, so they're not. Um, things that he would normally produce and, and ship out to wherever. Um, and so we were really looking for that sort of signature experience. We really, our goal was to make it engaging and interactive. And, and again, sort of family focused. And as I told Dave, I said, I want to I wanna think of the battleship as a board game. Are you allowed to use his name? Dave, that's right. Dave, it's just Dave. Or just Dave. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but I said, you know, I think, of, think of the battleship as a board game. And we're going to go all over, and these families are going to go all over. What can we do? And where can we go? Uh, and as I told you earlier, you can go all the way down to the second deck. You can go up to the O3 level, and you'll need to go from stem to stern to learn who the who the secret spy is. Oh, it's Come fun, Bob. Who is it? I can't tell you. No, it's it's Steve. <laughs> no, okay. Now, how does this work, though? Because if you come into Nauticus, do you have to? Is it in addition to the? Because you want to see this whole experience. Of course, right? yeah, of course. Um, we, we knew that people really wanted to see the ship, and we wanted to give them um, a, a vehicle by which to do that um, and, and learn the nomenclature of the ship and the history. But you basically come in and you take our blue package, um, which is uh, not only includes spy ship, but general admission to Nauticus, 3D theater, a riverboat cruise, the whole nine yards. Um, and then you'll go into the ship with a blueprint, and the blueprint has been intercepted by Captain, or excuse me, Admiral Raymond Spruance. Um, and so the, the, the premise behind this is it's 1945. We're off the coast of Iwo Jima. Spruance was a real admiral oh. um, from the Third Fleet, mm -hmm. um, who some credit with uh, winning World War II. And um, so you're going to learn a little bit of history as well and, and have some fun. Cool. Cost? 
$25.95. Again, that's the package price. So that's okay. not the spy ship price. That's the package price. Um, and um, we, we've been open for about uh, 10 days now, and it's, it's selling out. So cool. We're, so you we're better really get happy. your ticket. Get your ticket now. Okay. So, and you're going to have the exhibit through? Through Labor Day. I guess I should say experience, not experience, exhibit. Experience, yes, not an exhibit. Cool, they, through Labor Day. Through Labor Day. I'm going to go look for, uh, so if you hear the music? Come see us. Dun, 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 dun. We're going to close on that. When we come <laughs> back, it's 90 degrees today, but I want to find out if you can have a fire pit in Norfolk. Stay tuned. <laughs> Agent, your country needs you. Your mission is to discover the identity of the Axis spy on board the USS Wisconsin. We suspect he is raiding as a typical sailor. We believe we've narrowed down his identity to the three suspects. We need you on this mission now. It's probably Admiral Stewart. I really need to get off this ship. Trust no one. Tell no one. Focus. Spy ship. An onboard undercover quest. Welcome back to Norfolk Perspectives. Okay, it's 90 degrees out. My wife wants a fire pit, so this is the whole reason you guys are on the sofa. S save me here. Can you have a fire pit in Norfolk? I got Fire Marshal John Harrington and Beth Bruner, uh, safety, uh, safety educator. So the two of you ought to know. Yeah. I can't put a fire pit in, right? Yes, you can. You can have a fire pit. You can have a commercial fire pit, and you can have a fire on the ground in a pit. Can you? Yes, you can. Okay, but... You can, but how do you control it? Well, there's certain restrictions in the fire code, and you know these fire codes are all Virginia law, and they tell you the conditions that must exist while you have this outside fire. Um, we call it a recreational fire for pleasure. Um, you can have it in like a chimney. You can have it in a, a commercially bought fire pit, like you buy at Home Depot or Lowe's. Um, and we like to see uh, some distance uh, maintained between the structure and combustibles and stuff when you have these fire pits. Uh, when you have a fire on the ground outside, we've got to maintain either farther distance from your structure and your combustibles, 25 feet. We want to make sure you're attending the fire at all times. We want to make sure you have a method of extinguishment. Um, obviously, we don't want to be drinking around the fire. You know, you make bad decisions when you drink alcohol. Um, so, if your fire is causing a nuisance, however, to a neighbor or something, as the fire department may get called to the location and actually ask you to put the fire out, um, a lot of times those are, are problems between neighbors and we try not to get in the middle of that but um, you know talk to your neighbors if you want to have a fire outside on the ground as long as you're observing all of the the restrictions on distance and making sure you have extinguishing agent making sure you're attending the fire at all times while it's burning let them know talk to them you know we don't we don't like like I say we don't like to get in the middle of a neighbor dispute so okay now because I'm going to ask a series of questions about can or can't you do and or miss um, now you're going to be giving me responses based on Two things, firefighters don't want to have any fun, or because it's fact-based from what you've experienced, right? Which is the best, what, what is it, because they don't want to have fun, or is it because uh, fact of based history? Because of experience. Certainly, we want to keep everybody as safe as possible and reduce any and all fires and injuries associated with fires. Because yeah, so often when I have you guys on, and we talk, it, it seems so obvious. Of course, you should have a plan on how to react, but why don't people do it? You should have a battery in a smoke, smoke alarm. Smoke alarm, right? Working smoke it. alarm, yeah. We want make we want to make sure everybody has a working smoke alarm, and if they don't, they know the number to call six six four six six one six, and we'll get a working smoke alarm in every home in the city. That's our goal, and it doesn't work if you don't practice. You have to practice that escape plan. Right. Now, the other thing is it amazes me with uh, you hear about some of the fires on these back decks where somebody put a cigarette out. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's those kinds of, but it doesn't really matter what causes the fire, does it? It's, the response to it is going to be the same. Well, it does matter. I mean, obviously, you know, we don't want anybody setting an intentional fire right. or, or being careless or reckless with fire and causing damage to their own home or, or neighbor's property. Um, but, yeah, that does happen. I mean, cigarettes fall by accident. Somebody may go to sleep and I mean, fall up underneath of a deck, sit there for hours and hours and smolder. They go to bed. Next thing you know, the whole deck is on fire on the back of their house. Because it doesn't happen right away. Not all the time. Okay. Uh, grilling. Best thing you do is just go out to dinner, right? No. <laughs> okay. Gas grill versus charcoal grill. What are some tips? 
Um, gas grill. As far as the distance away from the house, decking, fence, any combustibles, doesn't matter what type of grill you have, okay. make sure you have a proper distance away. Make sure before you're grilling that you've inspected and cleaned your grill. You know, if you have a gas grill that you've inspected the hoses, that there are no cracks or holes in them. And if you need to replace the burners, go ahead and do that. When you are grilling, make sure you have a traffic-free area that there may be sort of a three-foot rule from the grill that no children or pets can come behind you. Okay. Now, I have a reputation of getting distracted periodically. And I did one time, I turned the gas on, set the burner, uh, forgot something inside, went inside. When I came back in and lit that sucker, it just flamed up. But I thought it was because, I mean, it was open, so it shouldn't be a... That's not true, is it? Anytime you're cooking, whether inside or out, okay. you need to be there. Unattended cooking is the number one cause of fires. And so whether you're cooking outside on the grill, enjoying the warm weather, or inside, you have to be there. Okay. So Cause, cause here I said, if you're going to get distracted, turn it off. And turn it off. Go do what you need to do. Come back. It'll be ready to go. Okay. Candles out. You guys don't like candles at all, do you? Not really, but it's not like we can come to your house and say you need to get rid of all your candles. So Alternatives? Um, well, there's uh, LED lights, if you like the little flickering LED lights. Not, not very fancy, but more and more restaurants are using those now in place of actual live candles. And, and they can look rather realistic, you know, depending on how they're arranged. But um, we like to see the LEDs. We don't have any too many uh, structure fires from LEDs. Okay. What, do you see, what would you say is the number one cause of a call during the summer? Hmm. Is it the grill? I mean, because you still have candles, you still have the grilling, you still have electrical issues within the house. Unattended cooking. Unattended cooking. Regardless if it's inside or outside. Certainly during the summer months, more families are cooking outside, enjoying the outdoor weather, and distracted cooking is our number one, whether it be inside or out. Okay, I, I got to ask you guys, we, we have an awesome record, you all have an awesome record of a four minute response time. I mean, that's been consistent, it's, it's, it, it beats all national standards. How do you do it? Four minutes or less. Yeah. And um, we have fantastic support from our fire chief and city manager that they maintain minimum staffing on all of our apparatus. And so we're all cross-trained as firefighter medics. And when somebody calls 911, they're getting the closest truck to them to respond to whatever type of emergency they have, whether it is fire or medical. They might get that big aerial ladder truck that was around the corner shopping at their home because they were the closest. And then, of course, an ambulance is coming as well if they need transport to the hospital. Okay, I got one more wife question. You gotta get me out of the doghouse on this one. Mowing the lawn, not even getting near a grill, and she keeps hollering out the door saying, do you drink any water when you mention medical? Oh, definitely. With the humidity and the temperatures as hot as they are, you have to stay hydrated. Our medical calls are always um, twice, three times more than any other calls of service that we have. Oh, and so yeah. we want to make sure that everybody's taking care of themselves medically. So think, plan, and be prepared. And practice. And pra oh, practice, too. Okay, well, thanks for everything that you guys do. And please pass along our thanks to the troops to say thanks for that response that you got. Yeah. And if we can also mention just one thing with the 4th of July holiday getting oh, to yes. come upon us, obviously we want everybody in the city to be safe and enjoy their 4th of July. Um, please don't use illegal fireworks in the city of Norfolk. It is a, it is a criminal offense and the fire marshal will be out with the police department enforcing the law this year. We want people to come to our shows that we have at uh, Town Point Park and also in Ocean View. We spend a lot of money for the citizens to be able to enjoy those legal firework shows and we make sure that they're safe. We have personnel there that monitors the show, monitors the crowd, make sure nobody gets injured. Um, but th we do have a lot of problem with illegal fireworks in Ocean View, on the beach, and in the different neighborhoods around and the city. Illegal fireworks are basically all, all fireworks. fireworks including so come on down fireworks, to including Park sparklers. Even sparklers. Even sparklers. Okay, well thanks. Thanks. And again, that's based on experience. Correct. Oh, yes, sir. So, thanks a lot for everything that you guys do. And yeah, Fourth of July, celebrate it safely by coming down to Town Point Park or up to Ocean View. Appreciate it. When we come back, we are really a major part of the National Parks and Recreation Month. Stay tuned. <laughs> I 
no, two seconds. Hang on, just stand still. Stand still. Okay. One second. Just stand still. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of children in foster care who will take you just as you are. Welcome back to Nova Perspectives. I knew that Jennifer Caldwell was going to be here, but I didn't know she was bringing a friend. Jennifer Caldwell with Recreation Parks Nova Space. How are you doing? Good. How are you, Bob? You've caused me more trouble, to be honest, because you're one of many people at Parks and Rec who get me, who have been nagging me about getting out of the get chair. Get out of the chair. Get moving. And I got to say, thanks. Absolutely. You look great, by well, the way. Well, I'm feeling so much better. Um, I've got to go out and buy all new clothes. That's uh, a good thing. Because they're too big, thanks Shopping's to you always a good thing, right? I guess. But it has been awesome, and I've met all kinds of new people, and what's really been kind of cool is I've had people stop me and say, you know, I'm starting to move myself. Good. So now you've got a whole new venture for the month of July. That's right. July is National Park and Recreation Month, so of course we're going to celebrate that here in Norfolk. And um, this is my friend, Artie Hardy, and he is hey, our... Hey, Artie. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> he is our Park and Rec Month mascot. So um, we have a lot going on in July, but one of the things that I'm most excited about is that Artie is going on an adventure, and he is going to be going every single day to a different amenity that we offer to our residents in Norfolk. Well, he's going to be a very busy heart. Thing, That's right. Because I mean, there's a whole lot. Absolutely. In no way is Artie going to be able to make it to all of our amenities in 30 days, but we're going to try to give you a good snapshot of what we have. And um, it's going to be pretty fun, I've got to tell you. Artie's well, gonna, pretty adventurous, though. So. Well, then I, I'm sure Chris won't mind. He will not mind. He can Chris come work Bendix, out I'm with sure you. I'm sure we'll let him drop in on the warrior class Absolutely. at 645 at the fitness center. Hey, I think he's, he's pretty good at sit ups, so we'll be good. Better than me. <laughs> <laughs> Already I can tell. Awesome. So, um, like I said, July is National Park and Recreation Month. So Artie's going to be on the move, but we want you guys to come out and enjoy Park and Recreation well, Month. How are we going to know where well. Artie goes? Artie is going to be on our Facebook page every day, facebook.com slash Norfolk RPOS. Um, so you can check it out. And we want you also to not only follow Artie, but let us know where your favorite amenities are as well in the city. So our theme this year for Park and Recreation Park and Recreation Month is I Heart My Park and Recreation, hence there Artie's shape. There we go, shape. yeah. Um, but we want you to tell us why you heart your park and recreation. So we want to hear from you, or we want to hear from our patrons and our residents, whether you like sliding down the slide at your local playground, visiting the um, a fishing pier, going to Town Point Park to check out those fireworks, mm -hmm. um, or visiting your local rec center. We want to know what makes our park and recreation system special to you. What do we, I mean, you mentioned uh, uh, Town Point Park, and people kind of think of Town Point Park. I mean, that is a park. It's, Absolutely. But we have different names for it. That's a festival park. It is. We have a lot of different types of. Yeah. Parks. What we is a park? Two fest. I mean, a park is really any open green space that you can recreate in. So whether it's smaller, where you can just, you know, do some cartwheels or take your dog for a run, throw a ball, or whether it's a festival park like Town Point Park or Ocean View Beach Park, which is our other festival park. Then we have community parks like Lafayette Park or Lakewood Park. Um, Northside Park, which features our skate, was, skate park as well. Um, and then we have neighborhood parks, which might just consist of a playground or a dog park. So we have a huge variety, over 134 parks and playgrounds in the city. So they're everywhere. Now we also have the whole summer plunge program. So you have pools all over the place, We have right? pools and beaches. We have um, three indoor and three outdoor pools. And we'll be opening this summer our newest pool, which is the Southside Aquatic Center. So we're very excited about that. I just, uh, this curly Q slide. Two story, swirly slide. I cannot wait for you to get on that. Know, That'll uh, be another we'll segment see. in itself. We're going to have the Neighborhood Expo there in, in October. So I'm looking forward to that too. Okay, okay we have seven and a half miles of beaches, but not all of them are manned. That's correct. We have three beach parks that are manned, um, Sarah Constant, Community, and Ocean View Beach Park. So we want to make sure when you're out for 4th of July during Parks and Rec Month, definitely want to swim near your lifeguard always. Never swim alone. Always make sure that if you're a parent, you're supervising your children on the beaches because we want to keep everybody safe. You know, I heard the coolest story the other day. i got to share it. It's a lifeguard out at Ocean View. All of a sudden, got on the little board thing, swam out. It was like, what for? There was a beach ball the little girl had lost. She swam out there to get it and brought it back in. That's awesome. That's that's the kind of service that you're offering. On Our the lifeguards beach. have heart. 
They really are. Okay, so you, how do I tell you what, what my favorite one is? Okay, so we have a few different ways. One, you can go to our Facebook page and shoot us a message or post a video or a photo of your favorite thing in our Park and Rec system. You can stop by City Hall, and we have, we'll have a display with these little I Heart My Park and Recreation Months placards. Cool. So we encourage you to fill out your favorite Park and Rec experience and post it there in City Hall. These are also going to be at all of our recreation centers. So while you're there working out or enjoying a summer program, you can fill one out there. Um, one thing that I'm excited about is we're offering a ton of free events throughout the month of July, so definitely visit our website, norfolk.gov slash rpos. We have a full calendar, and at those events, we'll be taking short video messages of why you like your Parks and Recreation Month. We'll be sure to have that on the city's YouTube page. Cool. I am enjoying most of the places that you've got as amenities, and i got to say thank you for getting me off this chair and be fit, but I've got one closing comment. Before you take a good book to the pool, put on sunscreen. <laughs> That's all I'll say. We want to hear from you what you'd like to see on TV48, but more importantly, what's going on in your neighborhood. Give us a holler at 664-6510. And as usual, it's a wonderful time to be in Norfolk just because of you. And you, right there.